research in humans, stress reduction, stress response improvements, Alzheimer's and cognitive decline, ADHD, physical activity. And then we have some other here that I want to share with you um, as far as its potential for neuroprotection and neurological disease and injury. There's some ongoing trials right now that are being funded. I mentioned this earlier, but I just want to kind of summarize what they're talking about here. Serene is an indispensable neurotropic factor and a precursor for neurotransmitters. L-serene is a native amino acid supplement. Its metabolic products have been shown to be essential not only for cell proliferation, but for neural development and specific functions in the brain. Growing evidence suggests that serine regulates the release of cytokines, chemicals, in the brain under some neuropathological conditions to recover cognitive function. It improves blood flow in the brain, cerebral blood flow. It inhibits inflammation, it promotes remyelination. So those of you who've ever had lesions on your MRIs and been told you have MS or other types of autoimmune demyelinating diseases, think serine, ask your doctor about serine and exert other neuroprotective effects on neurological injury. Serine has also been used to treat epilepsy, schizophrenia, psychosis and Alzheimer's disease, as well as other neurological diseases. Many experiments have demonstrated long-term treatment with serine increases the levels of nootropic factors in the tissue and the injured side of the brain. The neuroprotective effects of serine described herein are so compelling, it is tempting to consider how they might translate to humans and obtain satisfactory effects for the clinical use of serine. This is basically, you have to understand that serine is really, even though it's been around a long time and we've known about it a long time, from a clinical research perspective, it's really in its infancy. And one of the core problems with getting adequate human trial data is this right here. Dollars equates to research. And when you're talking about an amino acid like serine, you cannot put a patent on a natural amino acid. So that takes away the ability of big companies to earn more dollars because if you pay for the research as a company to prove that serine can have effects in all of these different situations and you prove it undoubtedly, you know, you, you're going to be spending probably hundreds of millions of dollars and, but you can't patent it. And so now everybody can come in and use your research and then they can drive the sales and take away um, not take away, but just basically they can sell serine products to people because there, there's, there's no comp or rather there's only competition in the market. There's no cornering of the market. And this is one of the unfortunate things in nutritional science is that because nutrients can't be patented, um, there's no drive to fund these studies. And this is where, what makes me so mad. What makes me so angry is that who should be funding these studies? Our tax dollars, our tax dollars, we spend hundreds of billions of dollars every year funding what? Pharma. We fund them to create patent medicines. They take our money, they create patents on medicines, and then they sell us back the research that we paid for in the form of drugs at a major, major profit. And so we basically, we pay for their R&D and then they turn around and patent it, even though we paid for the patents technically because it was our funding that, that drove it. And then they sell it back to us at a higher price. I mean, that's unethical as hell. And unfortunately, our, our funding should, I'm not saying we should cut off pharma, but our funding should be going to nutritional sciences. Um, because if we can fund the nutritional sciences with our tax dollars and we can empower people to understand that just, just looking at some of the benefits in this case, let's just, let's just go back to the research we do know about serine. It improves cognitive function and improves memory recall. It improves inattentive problems. It helps you recover from stress. Like these are not small things and this is relatively inexpensive. This serine is a relatively inexpensive thing and you can also eat more of it. You, you can go at it from a supplement angle. You can also go at it from the angle of let's, let's eat serine and make sure we're getting adequate quantities in our diet. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about some of the symptoms of serine deficiency. Now I mentioned earlier that um, 
a lot of what we know about serine comes from certain genetic disorders of metabolism where people have a problem making serine internally. And so in, those, in many of these cases, these, these kind of rare diseases, we know that these serine deficiencies cause neuropathy and seizure disorder and in infants developmental delays as well as skin inflammatory problems. There's actually some research on serine improving psoriasis outcomes, um, not because psori psoriasis is caused by serine deficiency, but because of serine's role in skin health. We know that these same individuals develop fatigue and immune suppressive problems. And this goes back to why, why, why would we see so many different things impacted by serines? Coming back, let's look at this diagram up close a little bit. As I mentioned before, you can make serine from sugar, from glucose. That's where pyruvate comes from. So this is the glucose pathway of producing serine. And so we get the serine from glucose, we get it to it from protein consumption in the diet, we can get to it from degradation of, of existing proteins in the body, and we can get to it from glycine. But the central role of serine is that, number one, it's responsible for helping to make this substance here called D-serine. D-serine plays a major role in neuromodulation, so it helps in neuro, it basically neuro chemical production, so regulating of brain function and, and brain excitability. So when you're talking about things like neuropathy and seizure disorders, uh, D-serine is a calmative and it's a directly uh, produced as a result of having adequate L-serine. We also, as we've been talking about, phosphatidylserine as a supplement being effective for so many different neurological conditions, but we get to phosphatidylserine directly from serine. We can also make sphingosine and, and uh, ceramide, which are other s constituents of brain cells, as I've mentioned before. So serine plays a role here, plays a role here. We also know that serine helps to regulate methyl tetrafolate um, or methylene tetrahydrofolate, which is basically vitamin B9. So it helps to methylate. It helps in the process of methylating. So when we convert serine to glycine, that actually helps to methylate vitamin B9. And so then now vitamin B9, because of serine, vitamin, and this, the studies have shown that the vast majority of, of methylation to folate comes from this mechanism. Now that we have this B9, we can get rid of homocysteine. I've told you that too much homocysteine is toxic, but one way we get rid of homocysteine is we convert it into methionine and that requires vitamin B9. And we get this vitamin B9 methylation as a direct result of serine. Now we also, what is the other function of vitamin B9 neurochemically speaking? We can't make amino acids or rather um, neurotransmitters like serotonin. You need folate to do that and melatonin. You need folate. Folate is the beginning precursor. So you understand that that methylation of that B vitamin is very important from a homocyst or from a serine perspective. So we also know that to, to make home or to convert homocysteine into methionine, this part of the outcome of this is an increased ability to produce DNA. RNA and protein, and these are elements required for healing and repair, and, and serine plays a central role in that mechanism. We also know that serine helps here in the conversion of homocysteine into L-cysteine, and then subsequently, it's not on this chart, but glutathione, which is our master antioxidant, but also taurine. And taurine is a prerequisite for your body's ability to make bile acids, which help you absorb fats. So vitamins A, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K, omega-3 fatty acids, all dependent upon bile acid production from your liver, which is, you know, how do we get there? How do we get there? Well, one of the ways we get there is through the conversion of homocysteine to cysteine and subsequently taurine. So serine playing this really core central role in multiple um, mechanistic processes biochemically making it very, very central and important to health.